This week on Performance TV, we're setting the stage, putting the brakes on old brakes, and shedding the light on this bike. Next. Welcome to another edition of Performance TV. Today we're going to take care of a problem that a lot of diesels create themselves, and that is vibration and heat. And when we're trying to keep things fast together, Robert here with us from Stage 8 Locking Fasteners. Uh, diesels create a lot of their own problems when it comes to bolts. That's correct. That's correct. And when you throw a turbo on it, it gets even worse. So what we're going to install today is a Stage 8 Locking Turbo Kit to mount the turbo to the exhaust manifold. Now they're already starting off with you've got to have the grade 8 to start with, which is what this one had on it, but. We do have a grade eight bolt here, but one of the things about the bolts that they used when they put this Garrett turbo on in the first place, it's got a 916 head. That's kind of hard to reach. Ours is the same size bolt with a 716 head, which makes it a little easier to install. It's also grade eight material, the same as the OEM. And then we've got stainless steel, 308 stainless steel retainers here, which will keep it tight. Right, and because we're dealing with a lot of heat back here, so we gotta have this stainless steel. And Tommy, you've kind of noticed that those grade eight bolts, they weren't staying fastened. <laughs> they, were, they were not tight. And let me tell you, this isn't the easiest thing to get into. So I want to tighten them up once. I don't want to go back and have to do it again. All right, we're going to get you set up with a kit and let you tighten it down for one last time. Robert, I got the bolt out. It's kind of tough in here, and it was it was not tight. It was it was snug, but it wasn't tight. So they don't seem to uh, be staying tight. Now I've got the stage eight locking fastener, the bolt. I'm just going to put it in, and then we'll put the locking fastener on it, and I have to worry about it coming out, right? Perfect. Yeah, and you'll notice that just like our header bolts, there's a 316 Allen recess in here, what we call a double hex head. That way you can use the 316 ball Allen if you have to. Oh, well, there's one here. It's going to take some work getting in and out. Yes. Perfect. So it made your life a little bit easier. <laughs> Let me explain to the folks how this works. Just like our header bolts, we put a groove in the top of the bolt. The bolt will go in and get tightened. Then with our stainless steel retainer up against the body of the manifold, exhaust manifold there, we'll keep that tight. It's just like keeping a box end wrench on the bolt. And then the E-clip goes in to keep that down so it can't fall off. Now a lot of turbos these days are coming with studs and use nuts. We have a stage eight locking nut system here. Same thing, the groove is in the top of the nut. The nut goes on, the retainer goes on, and the clip goes on just like a bolt. I was going to ask you about that because there's one right here that could use a stud. In my opinion, it should have a stud. <laughs> I was looking at that. I would think that when they put the Garrett Turbo on, they would have put a stud in, but uh, I guess that didn't happen. This is some tight quarters to get in here. It is. That's why you don't have to don't want to have to retighten them all the time. Absolutely. This is, I want to do this job once. Yeah, after header bolts, this is the second most likely bolt to come loose on a car. Five degrees of counter rotation costs you 50% of your clamp value. Five degrees is just a little bit. It's almost hard to tell, you know, using just visually. So with a stage eight locking fastener, you can look at the retainer. If the retainer is still on the nut of the bolt, you know for a fact it hasn't loosened. Hasn't moved. Yeah. There you go, nice and stuck. Right, got it tight. Now I'm gonna install the uh, locking mechanism. If I can get my hands in there. Let me roll it over and see if we can make that work. Cause that's what the neat feature here is. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, remember if you flip it over, you got 12 totally different positions. I like it. Just like a box end wrench. Now install the clip. And that bolt's not going anywhere. You should be able to push that on with your thumb, and if not, you can just use a regular screwdriver or anything like that. Simple as that. Nice, it's nice and free. It should be free when it's installed properly. Perfect. All right, beautiful. Good yeah. job. We can get Kathy to do the other three. We're good. All right, let's go have a beer. <laughs> I heard something about me doing something else, plus I heard about beer or something like that, too. Yeah, I'm going to get these back, too, this front one here. You wrap that up, Robert and I are going to uh, go Okay, away. well, we're going to wrap this up for right now. You want to find out more about all the different applications, stage8.com. We'll have more next on Performance TV. And you can finish that up. I mean, you're looking good up here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let me just get down in there. Okay. This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Hearst, America's number one shifter. Pirelli tires, power is nothing without control. And by ZMAX, tested, trusted performance.
back to performance TV. You know, Tommy, you and I like to go really fast, but we also like to be able to stop, even in our daily drivers. That's right. You know, we, we're all about performance, but you got to get that performance stopped somehow. And we got an 07 Dodge truck here. The brakes are pretty worn out on it. We're going to put some new pads on it. Plus, we're going to put a new rotor on it. You can take them and have them turned down, but this 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 case right here, we're going to go ahead and put a new rotor on it as well with the new brake pad. Kathy, the first step we got to do is take this rotor off. So we've got these little keys locks right here. We're going to pull them off. And then the clips. rotor will be, yeah, little clips. That's holding the whole rotor assembly on. Just get these loose. Then we'll undo the uh, bolts for the caliper and pop it off. Now we're just going to turn the, the whole assembly out here so we can get in there and get the uh, bolts for the caliper. Got the bolts loose on the caliper, we'll pull those out. We're just gonna slide this caliper off with the uh, pads inside. Well, you can see, Katie, how much, how much, how little pad there's left on this truck. Yeah, we would've waited too much longer. We've been metal to metal on here. Yeah, I'm sure they're making a little noise already. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get the rest of the pad out, and then we'll pull that uh, rotor off. All right, Kathy, get the rotor off. We need to pull this caliper bracket off here. Okay. And then we'll have you take the rotor off. Can you handle that? <laughs> what we want to do now is kind of take a look at everything, clean yeah. it up. Just we want to. Yeah, clean it up a little bit. Let's okay. hold the truck. Got a lot of rust on it, so we'll just clean things up a little bit. New rotor will slide right on. I want to make sure our slides and our pins are also all clean, because we're going to lube those up too before we put them back on. We want to make sure we're going to have even brake wear, but we need to get these pistons back in. So I'm going to give you a C-clamp here. Go ahead and turn it. Tighten it up a little bit. Shoes were on the old brake pads. Tighten it up a little bit and push those pistons back in. That way when we get our new pads on, the car will slide right over. Exactly. All right, Kathy, ready to put the new rotor on? Okay. Slide up there. There we go. Slid right on. Yep. Nice. I'm gonna put a nut on there, just hold yeah, it, hold it so we can put everything back together. Just enough to keep it from moving around. All right, now we're ready to put everything back together. Slide our bracket on there, and put the bolts back in it. Put this thing back on. All right, Kathy, I'm ready to put the brake pads on. Well, we want to make sure that we lube our sliders, our pins, everything, because if we don't, we could have uneven brake wear, and it kind of defeats the purpose of doing any of this. Yeah, and they make a little noise once in a while. When you yeah, don't do we don't like that. We want to make sure our work's good and quiet. Yes. Some that on there, up here. We've got our piston shoved back inside the caliper. All right. Got these pins pushed back. Now it's time to slide the caliper back on. Okay. Secure. Okay, Tommy. Nice, nice job. Yeah, new brakes on this new on this old truck, and uh, everything should be good to go. Yeah. Okay. So all we need to do now is put our wheel and tire back on, and remember to when you're tightening up, do it in a star pattern, 100 foot pounds, and of course you're going to want to check them after so many miles. All right. We're we'll going to these brakes a test here in a minute. Okay. We'll have more coming up next on Performance TV. It's a good job.
This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by UltraCool, dedicated to bringing you the best oil cooling solution to your V-twin motorcycle. DeWitt Radiators, high performance aluminum radiators for any application, proudly made in the USA. Boss NOS, nitrous reinvented. Low car, quality, plain and simple. And by Jiffy Tight, plumbing simplified. Welcome back to Performance TV. Tommy, we've already done a lot of great stuff to this bike here a week ago, thanks to the folks at Black Wolf Harley Davidson, and all of the money that we're raising, too, is going to be great. Last week, we put on the comfort package from Kiriak, and Brian, what do we got for it this week? Lighting. Lighting. LED lighting? All LED, no more incandescent bulbs. Perfect. I love LED lighting. We're going to donate a bunch of money for charity after we put all these accessories on this bike. Whatever it sells for above the cost of the bike goes to the charity. That's right, the veteran service organization that's going to go to. And let's go ahead and get started on this, guys. All right. All right, Brian, first we're going to start off. These just pop right off. Can't wait to get all the LED lights all over this thing here. It's really going to look great when it's done. All right, want to hand me one of those? There you are. And all we have to do here, we took the bulb out. This is just going to go right back in where the bulb was. And just spin it on in there. Pop this right on. Can't get much more simple than that. I'm going to install these LED tail lights, and we're going to put a third light for the tail light right here. All the lights are going to pulsate. Let me show you how easy this is to put these lights in. Pull the bulb out, put the new one in, pop it on. Now we're also going to install a third tail light right under here above the license plate. So to do that, we got to take this mount off. I got the third tail light installed right here, and at the same time, added a new chrome license plate frame. Now all we have to do is uh, put the grommet back in the fender and reattach the tail light bracket. Okay, get the screw out of the front. Brian, right, we're gonna pop this ring off. Set this aside. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we got a spring we need to take out back here, right? That's right, so we'll get that out of there. Got it. This is just going to slide down. And then we'll just unplug our light. Okay. We need to do a little drill in here, and we want to make sure we do it right. So we got a little trick that we're going to do. That's right. So we're just going to, um, on the bat lash itself, we're going to put a piece of tape on it and just mark where our wire is. Okay, how about I hold that for you while you make a, sure. make a mark? Wires right there. Just mark it out. Okay. And then we're just going to set it right up here. And really, the way to to put these on is you go by feel because it, it's got a contour to the fairing and a contour to the piece. Okay. So we're just going to see where it fits really good, which is right about here. Okay. And then we're just going to mark it out. All right. Now we're ready to drill. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna feed that through there. Yep. Anything special that we need to do with, before you apply all of that? Well, what we do is um, we clean and prep the surface like we've done. And then we also, on the back side here, we're just gonna activate the, the catalyst and the adhesive. And you just kind of rub it with the back of your fingernail, get it ready to go. And okay. we'll feed that wire down to you. And then we're just gonna stick it on. So we'll start with this first piece right here like this. And then we'll just finish off with this. We'll peel a little bit of it up, get it stuck, and then finish it off. Okay. So started there. And now just pull your wire through a little bit. Perfect. And then line it up line with it our tape up. right there. And then I just work my way right down. We're just going to run into the factory accessory wiring here. It's already set up for us. Now, we're going to add another lighted accessory to the front called our um, LED halo ring. Right. So that's going to plug into these uh, wires right here. And for our lighted bat lashes, um, they provide with uh, the kit a little T-tap to go right into the wire here. And then also um, just another connector. We're going to run the two wires together, crimp it, plug it in, and then we're done. OK, we'll go ahead and get this taken care of. Tommy, is it coming OK? I've got all the wiring run. Brian, why don't you come back here and make sure I've got it plugged in okay. This is our uh, pulsator right here. Correct. Load equalizer, I've got all those strapped in. Make sure everything's plugged in right. All the wiring harness, everything about the uh, Kiriakin wiring harness, everything's plug and play, plugs right in. 
It is, man, you, you did a great job. So I'll just wire tie all this up, put the cover back on, saddlebag, and I'm gonna throw some chrome accents down there by the uh, tail light on the fender, and uh, we're good to go, huh? Excellent. All right, check out Kathy, see if she's doing all right up there. All right. All right, now for the big piece up here, Brian. We've got our connectors on. Let's go ahead and get this halo plugged in. All right. So we're just gonna plug into our connectors that are already there from the factory. Color coded, of course. Exactly, <laughs> real simple. That one plugged in. And now I'm gonna add the headlight to it. This headlight only has two LEDs in it. That's correct, just two. So just kinda hold that there. Okay. All right, and I'll get this plugged right in. Factory style connectors, make it simple. And we took the plate off of the factory headlight so we could just slide that right back in there. It makes it a lot easier to do it that way. And get our little spring back on. Now see, I know that wasn't easy to take off. Yeah, it's got a little tension on it. Yeah, for a reason, I'm sure. <laughs> we don't want this headlight coming out. Yep. So that's right, it right there. in there. Yep, and now we're just gonna put this, the factory ring back on. And this kind of helps hold on our, our new halo. Okay. We'll run the wire right through that hole there. Awesome. And then we'll reinstall our factory screw. You got it? Yep, and then we'll just snap this right over the factory ring here, just like that. Okay. And what we'll do before we tighten this down, get everything kind of seated a little bit here, but we're gonna pull this back out, and there's just a little adhesive that we're gonna we kind of- rub that on that again, or? Um, no, that's okay with this different, one here. Different kind of adhesive. Yep, different type of adhesive. Just pull it off. And what else is gonna help hold this on is it has a compression fit to it as well. Okay. So this just sticks on, and then when we tighten it down, it's gonna compress together, and that's what's gonna hold it in place. Awesome. All right, check this out. Before and now after. Wow, this stuff has all turned out absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, Brian, for being a part of this project, and we really hope we raise a whole lot of money for our special charity. We hope to do a whole lot more installs, and we will, coming up next week on Performance TV. Man, this is great.